Well, hello there. Today, I'm going to show you how to become unstoppable. If you're an empath, then this video is for you. I'm going to give you three things that are absolutely essential for you to move from wherever you are to watching your energy absolutely blossom. But the caveat is you're going to have to put in the work, my friends. This isn't just going to happen. It's not a magic formula. But what it is, is a reminder to you about your magnificence. Because one thing that I know about being an empath is that it's very easy along the way to get mixed in with the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd, folks. And this is what it's all about. So if you've been in with that wrong crowd, I'm the little reminder that you need that you are way better than this. Now, we're not going to blame anyone. We're not going to uh, turn you into a victim. That is not part of the plan. If you're in a bad situation, you had to be there, folks. You have to be there right now. And why do you have to be there? Why do you have to be there? Well, part of being the empath, part of being an empath, is you're very good with people. But what you're not so good at, probably, almost definitely, in fact, if you're watching this video and you clicked on this title, I would actually say definitely, <laughs> because it's hard to say definitely, folks, you are definitely not so good at prioritizing your own needs, your own energy and your own well-being because that is the nature of the empath. Uh, it's easy to drop everything to help our nearest and dearest, our best friends, even random strangers, but what do you do for yourself? And it's easy to forget about that part of the equation. All too easy, folks. All too easy to forget about the most important part of the equation, and that's you. So the first part of this, the first thing of this three-step formula, and this is the most important part of all, is to know your value i want that to sink in if you're struggling to understand exactly what your value is then go to your three or even five closest friends and ask them just ask them straight out say look i've been challenged with an exercise to understand exactly what my value is what my skill set is why are you my friend and what do you like the most about me now, that probably feels a little bit uncomfortable being an empath because you don't like to blow your own horn. And this is part of the problem that you have is uh, acknowledging your own greatness. It seems a little bit big headed. It seems a little bit slightly narcissistic, maybe talking about myself and how great I am. And you've probably got narcissists in your world that have traumatized you with their self grandiose nonsense. So in a way to deal with that, you've gone to the other extreme somewhere along the lines. Easily done as an empath, folks. So this is really important, the, the first step. In fact, the first step is the main step of the formula. If you get the first step right, everything else is easy. If you don't do the first step, then you may as well not bother listening to the next two. So know your value. Now, if you're an empath, it's almost definitely that you're good with people, you're a good mediator. You are the person that people lean on. Uh, they go to in all things dispute based. You're the level head. You can reason with even the most unreasonable of people in your life. And you're incredibly good at doing that. And quite often you will suck it up if you're feeling out of sorts just to keep the peace. Now, there's where the glitch in the matrix is. The stuff that you let go. Stuff that you let go. So... Knowing your value isn't just about knowing what you're good at. It's knowing what you're not prepared to tolerate from this point onwards. The behaviors you're not prepared to accept. Now, if you're doing that exercise, you're going to your closest friends and you're asking them, you know, what is my value? What do you really like about me? If you're feeling really brave, say, what do you think my weaknesses are? You'll get gold from this exercise, folks. In fact, if you just do this exercise, go to three of your closest friends and ask them what are my strengths and weaknesses, you'll get gold. There's an exercise, complete, job done, slam dunk. You will get such great information from that exercise that probably baffle you why you didn't do it earlier. Probably baffle you. You'll probably be left wondering why is this not? Why isn't everyone doing this? Because your friends have your back. And if you give your friends permission to be honest with you, 
then you'll get some real gold. And that includes the stuff that they wish you were better at. Where do you think I need to improve the most? That question to your three closest friends is pure gold. Pure gold, folks. Pure gold. These are people that have your back. These are people that want the best for you. And they will see things that you don't see about yourself now. So this is the first part of the process. Part of knowing your value is seeing you is, is acknowledging your value to your people closest to your friend network. Now in life, really, once you hit the 50 plus um, part of your life, you're very lucky. You can say that you've got five really close friends. Lucky, really lucky. That's what it boils down to. Too many empaths spend too much of their lives concerned about the opinions of people that mean absolutely nothing. Well, it's not that they mean nothing to you. It's that you mean nothing to them. There's plenty of armchair critics out there that like to throw their shit around to soil the empath with their bad attitude to bring you down a peg or two because maybe they thought you were having too much fun or being too vibrant or being too good with people or having too big a community. And there's lots of naysayers out there that will say nasty things for no reason. This is like you have to build up your thick skin. This is part of life. And this is part of the empath process. Because although you're good with people and you've got a superpower, you're not so good at taking criticism, at developing the thick skin. And that's what this process is about. It's about working out what comments are worth listening to and what aren't. And if it's not one of your friends or someone that has your back, then the odds are that it's not worth listening to, folks. Not worth listening to. You stop listening to idiots, to tossers that don't have your back. And the reason that people do that is we deflect our own issues to other people. And they only become your issues to the point that you're prepared to accept them. Stop accepting nonsense from idiots. That's the first part about knowing your value as an empath. Getting rid of the opinions of 99% of people in your life and prioritizing the people that have your back. They're giving you good feedback. You know, it may be to stand up for yourself. Feedback you're probably going to get. I, I wish that you were less tolerant with idiots. I wish that you would walk out of that relationship with the narcissist. I wish that you would stop making excuses for behaviors of idiots. They're not the person that you think they are. And because empaths like to see the best in people, this is an Achilles heel, folks. It's an Achilles heel for an empath. Seeing the best in people. Not everyone deserves to have the best seen in them. And there are 5% roughly of the population with no empathy at all. They fall in the category of psychopaths or narcissists, which means if you think you can make excuses for them and they're somehow going to get improved, they're not. <laughs> they're not because they don't have empathy. They don't feel like you do. They're not the same as you. Not all people are created equal. And narcissists and psychopaths have an unfair advantage over an empath so they take advantage of your good nature and their nature is inherently poor, especially for the narcissist. Their nature is all about me, 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 which is why so often the empath gets attracted to the narcissist and sees that behavior as abhorrent. No, I'm not going to do the me, me, me thing because I don't like it when other people do it. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to big myself up. Well, this is what you need to do. You've got to know your value. You have to know this. This is the foundation of everything else, folks. Learn your value. And part of that is getting the uh, respected opinions of people that you trust, your friends, people that have had your back. And there's probably not many of them. Maybe you think there are. Maybe you're young. <laughs> Maybe you're lucky. You're young. You haven't woken up to this yet, but you will. You will, my friend. Don't you worry. So the next thing, and this is massive, so often, especially later in life, empaths get caught in what they don't want. There's so often when I speak to my empath friends, and I'm like, what do you want? And they will say things like, I want, I want that person to stop doing da 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 da. I'm like, yes, but what do you want? Well, I don't want to accept this behavior anymore. I'm like, yes, but what do you want? And it's like, I don't want to be shouted at. Now, you notice in all of the replies, this is very common amongst empaths. 
They know exactly what they don't want, but they're not focusing on what they do want. And from an energy point of view, knowing what you don't want is like having a terrible goal, a goal that is, I don't want to be anywhere near this pile of shit. Now, if that's your goal, it's called an away from goal. You'll just see the, you'll see the shit and you'll run. But you could hit a landmine running in the wrong direction with the wrong goal because all you want to do is get away. You could be running even further in the wrong direction from the actual goal that you want because you don't know what that goal is. You might want happiness, but that's not your goal. You're not focused on that. You're so focused on the pile of shit that you're running in the opposite direction. This is called an away from strategy, folks. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have something compelling that you want, that you're moving towards with everything that you do, you're running away in the opposite direction. You know what you don't want. You're an expert in that. But do you know what you do want? And this is a huge part of the equation. It may be. It may be like myself. It might be some big retreat center in the middle of nowhere to nurture people. So having that vision, I can always go back to it. Always go back to it. Nurture people, build communities, build spiritually aligned community to raise the energy and the vibration of the planet. There's a goal. There's a goal. And whenever I have a bad day or I get rocked, back to that goal, back to that focus, back to that vision, folks. And if you don't have that vision, then your energy will just dive. If you're always running away from something you don't want, you'll never find what you do because you don't even know. And you haven't given yourself permission to even think about it. So what you'd be a really good idea right now, folks, is to pause this video and work out, do I want? What is it that I'm looking for? What would make me happier? What would make me more aligned? What would tap into my purpose? Is there a bigger purpose for my life? These are good questions. If I was here for a reason, that reason would be. And if you're struggling to work out what that reason is, find the patterns in your life. Ask yourself, when are the three times, in fact, not even three times, I'm going to ask you a question now and go with your first memory. The first thing that pops in your head, don't even think about it and don't change it. Because the first thing is significant. I'm going to ask you a question now. I want you to tell me a time when you were really, really happy in your life and you felt aligned and energy and vibrant. Now, the odds are you've had a memory now. You've had a memory. doesn't matter how obscure. Don't try and change it because the unconscious mind works in mysterious ways. It's like thunder and lightning. The lightning comes first. The first thing, that's what you go with. The thunder is the conscious mind going, no, that can't be right. Surely I must have had a happier memory than that. I, there's got to be something better. Or that doesn't feel like it makes sense. Go with your first thing. And ask it again. And another memory that made you really happy and aligned and feel good. When did you last feel great in your life? What were you doing? What were you doing? Start listing your whole life. And find the things where you felt the best, felt the most aligned. So for me, when I did this exercise, I found the times in my life that I felt the most aligned was when I was traveling, when I was backpacking in my younger years, exploring different cultures, different countries, sense of adventure, working in a different countries, going overseas, seeing what's available, getting outside, getting away from my family. Funnily enough, that was my away from motivation. But then I discovered that I loved travel. I loved exploring new cultures. I loved exploring new places. I loved meeting new people. And I found that I could build communities anywhere I went in a very short period of time. And so when everything else, when my life started to fall apart, I went back to this and I thought, what am I good at? Good at exploring. I'm good at meeting new people. I'm good at building communities. So the retreat center was an obvious, an obvious goal. Bring them together. Bring the people together, folks. Bring them together. So that is my vision. What's yours? When did you feel aligned? When I look at other times in my life, running events in business, when I ran events, when I was hosting them, watching the experience of the crowd, I could always go to other people's events. And I'm like, why do people not engage the crowd more? It's all about the speaker. 
I loved getting people to do things, getting them to interact, getting them involved, getting them to come up and share in the front of the stage. All of these things, changing, building communities, involving people. And all of this came back down to, to things like that. And if you go through your teenage years, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, think of a thing that you did during that period. What was a significant part of your life? And you will find that all of these things align. There's a thread. There's a thread of things that make you feel vibrant, that make you feel uplifted. But as you get into the latter years, it's easy to get stuck. It's easy to get caught with a narcissist. It's easy to start doubting yourself. This is where empaths go wrong. And this is why you have to find what you want and get a vision board, get it on your screensaver, get it on your mobile phone, get something that reminds you of that every day. Have a goal that you're heading towards. Maybe to find a life partner. It may be to raise the vibration, maybe to start a meditation retreat. Who knows? What floats your boat, folks? Only you know that. You'll only find it when you start asking yourself, when was I aligned? When was I feeling my best? And if you follow the dots there, you can track a path to a compelling goal that will give you something to move towards. And the third thing, folks, once you've discovered your value and you have a compelling goal to move towards, now you just need to take little steps towards it. Who can help me with that? What can I do right here, right now? Well, here's something I can do. I was actually guided to make this video today. So if there's anyone building uh, building retreat centers or building a spiritual community or has thought about it or has a piece of the jigsaw to work with that, then get in touch. Absolutely get in touch, folks. You never know. So I'm putting it out there. I'm putting my vision out there. That's what I'm doing. One small step. One small step for man, a giant step for the spiritual community, folks. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Put it out there. A small step. Believe in miracles. Believe in energy. Connect with people that have your back. Do all of these things and get rid of the tossers. Swipe right, folks, on the tossers. Swipe right. Get rid of them. No, I don't want that. No, I've had enough of that. Need to be just a little bit more ruthless, be a little bit more aligned, be a little bit more self-confident, and then march in the right direction, folks. And when you're ready to move, march in the right direction, or even if you're not, then you want to join this journey. You want to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be drip feeding you these little tidbits of information and exercises that can help you to wake up. Wake up, my friend. Wake up, my empathic friends. I am here communicating directly with you to tell you that your time has arrived and this is your template. This is your three-step plan to a better life, to more alignment, and to finally, finally waking up to what it is you might be here. And apart from anything else, folks, the world needs it right now. There are dark energies here. The empaths need to align. We need to get together. We need to raise the vibration. We need to do something good. Time is now. The time, my friend, is now. And if you want more of that and you haven't already, then please show this video a bit of love. Comment. By all means, comment. Share your goals here. You never know who's going to be reading it, folks. You never know who's going to be aligned with what you want to do. It could be miracles on this thread. So join the journey. Subscribe to the channel, please, folks. It will help you, but it will also help me. And let's get this message out there. There's another video for me if you want some more of my uh, my little insights, my little videos, my little rambles into the world of energy and what you can do to amplify yours. Thank you, my friends. Stay aligned, know your value, know what you want and take steps towards it.